Hello everyone and welcome back to Filmbook Review, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's news desk and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the world. Today on Filmbook Review, I'll be reviewing the 2022 film The Pale Blue Eye. The Pale Blue Eye is directed and written by Scott Cooper and stars Christian Bale, Harry Melling, Gillian Anderson, Fred Hersheger, and Robert Duvall. This is a The Pale Blue Eye movie review and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this The Pale Blue Eye film review as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box and you are all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash filmbook. And now The Pale Blue Eye movie review. Director Scott Cooper's literary adaptation, The Pale Blue Eye, is one of those detective movies that goes out of its way to throw you off track in terms of guessing who the real killer is. With Christian Bale in the leading role as the detective, Augustus Lander, there should be no reason that Cooper's film doesn't work to perfection. But it doesn't despite some of the best production values possible and a chilling musical score by none other than Howard Shaw. Set around a murder at West Point Academy in 1830, expect to be guessing the whole way through who the killer is, only to end up beating yourself up at the end when you realize you didn't figure it out. It's one of those slaps in the face that only disappointing movies can provide. With that being said, Harry Melling vividly portrays the cadet Edgar Allan Poe, yes, the infamous poet, who Detective Lander teams up with to catch a culprit responsible not only for a wickedly evil murder, but also for the removal of the victim's heart. Could it be two different people? Melling is an interesting actor and, for a while, I really liked him in this role as Poe. He was playing the part with sarcasm and sophistication, but when he decides to take an interest in a young blonde named Leah Marquis, it feels that the script did Melling a tremendous injustice. Poe wouldn't have acted like he does in the latter part of the film based on how he's portrayed at the beginning stages of the movie. Without getting too much into the secrets of the plot, the character falls victim to servicing the plot rather than having the plot service the character of Poe accordingly. Robert Duvel pops up as Jean Pepe, a bookworm with an in-depth knowledge of the occult who plays a key role in the plot. It's great to see Duvel working again even if his screen time is minimal. The Oscar winner makes this role here stand out where it could have just gotten lost in the shuffle. Toby Jones expertly serves as Dr. Daniel Marquis, who misses a few things in the autopsy regarding the dead body that is found. A key character finds a note in the victim's hand that serves as a major clue in the case. Daniel's wife is a little peculiar, and as played by Anderson, she's wonderfully fascinating to watch as the plot throws in one too many distractions willy-nilly as the plot progresses. One sequence in particular, where a ritual leads to a huge fire, was particularly troublesome and made the movie a bit too over the top for its own good. If you've seen a detective thriller before, and who hasn't, you will be impressed by Bell's commitment to his role as Detective Lander, a character who occasionally becomes intimate with his token love interest Patsy. Bell is solemn and intense in his part. Landon is ridden with tremendous depth until the mechanics of the plot change his motivations a bit as the story progresses. This is the type of movie that, if it were better, would require a second viewing to go through all the logistics of the storyline a second time. There are some jaw-dropping revelations that wouldn't make more sense if you go back to the beginning of the picture to watch it again after learning them, but there's not enough substance to the earlier scenes to make it worthwhile. Timothy Spall is also in the picture as Superintendent Thayer, who steals scenes right out from the actors he plays opposite, but his character ultimately gets lost in the shuffle. Lucy Boynton is a terrific actress, but she is unfortunately cut from the proceedings prematurely. Boynton flashes out her character significantly, but her scenes with Melling only work in spurts. The Pale Blue Eye has some things going for it, that Howard Shaw's score is truly intense and keeps the momentum of the movie pumping until things take a turn for the worse in the plot and the story spirals out of control. Bell is more than adequate at playing down and out and the cinematography sets the mood of the movie. All the elements for a great thriller were present except for the perfect screenplay. While Scott Cooper may have remained faithful to Louis Bayard's novel, the casting of Harry Melling would have required some revisions to the story to make it work more fluidly. Melling still has some good moments in the picture. This film, though, is simply a case of style over substance. And that brings us to the conclusion of this, The Pale Blue Eye Movie Reviewer. 
I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comment section. If you liked what you heard doing this review, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please also visit and subscribe to our podcast channel at Filmbook Podcast and our trailer and reaction channel at Filmbook Trailers. If you'd like to get Filmbook's articles delivered to your inbox, sign up for our daily newsletter in the description at film-book.com. Thank you for viewing, and you can watch one of these reviews next.